Okay guys, so let's get straight to the limit. We're supposed to evaluate the limit as n approaches infinity of n factorial all over n to the power of n, everything to the power of 1 over n. Okay, well this thing's awesome. <laughs> well, how are we supposed to evaluate it? You see, first of all, we could actually kind of say that this n factorial there will definitely be smaller than n to the power of n mm, we have down there in the denominator of that fraction in the limit. And that's because, well, in the n factorial, we just kind of multiply consecutive integers, consecutive integers together, to get the n factorial, but in n to the power of n, we just multiply, well, n and times, and so, well, those, you know, th those guys just have to be larger, yeah? So, what well, we see that probably the stuff, I mean, for sure, the stuff we have here in the fraction itself is gonna be approaching a zero. However, as an approach infinity, this one over n in the number, in the, uh, in the uh, exponent also will be approaching a zero. And so what we will actually approach here is a situation of zero to the power of zero, which is, Pretty undefined because we have no idea what zero to the zero, zero might be. I mean, sometimes it turns out to be an e, sometimes it's an infinity, sometimes it's one or something like this. Yeah. So I think we will have to unfortunately evaluate it. Oh, maybe it's maybe luckily, maybe fortunately, we will have to evaluate it using some different methods. Okay. So how? I mean, what kind of a method would I propose here for you guys? So first of all, I would like to denote this limit as some kind of an L, yeah? So L will be equal to this limit as n approaches infinity of n factorial over n to the power of n, all to the power of 1 over n. And well, why did I do it? And some of you guys who are familiar with limits and tricks for cognitive limits might actually already um, have, might have already guessed that what I want to do here is just take the natural log of both sides of this equality because the nice thing is that the natural log of a limit is just a limit of a natural log, which is a beautiful property of limits, which is that I mean, which states that the natural log of our L will be equal to the limit as n approaches infinity of the natural log of n factorial, uh, actually it's going to be 1 over n, the natural log of n factorial or all over n to the n, yes, so what I did is I just took the 1 over n from the exponent right in front of that natural log, which is what I can do by the properties of natural logarithms. Okay, lovely. I would like to, well, do something about this limit, maybe it will be a little bit easier to evaluate than this guy here. Okay, so how are we supposed to do this stuff? Well, let's maybe try and kind of see what is this stuff even equal to? What is this natural log of n factorial over n to the power of n equal to? What can we do with it? Can we manipulate it somehow or something like this? Well, once again, we know that n factorial is equal to 1 times 2, oh, sorry, times 3, all the way up to this n. On the, on the, on the same hand. <laughs> on the other hand, we know that n to the power of n will be equal to n multiplied by n, multiplied by n, all of the way up to n, well, we just multiply n by itself n times. Lovely. But I could actually kind of write, I, I can actually write this um, thing, this n factorial over n to the power of n as just, well, 1 over n multiplied by 2 over n multiplied by 3 over n up to n over n, yeah? So I just kind of go on and group those, all of those um, multiplied, uh, th those numbers that, that I multiply here in those two products together into pairs and I just divide one number by the other in that, in that pair respectively. Yeah, so this is what I'm, what I'm gonna get after doing all of that. And so I can just kind of take this thing and plug it into my natural logarithm, getting that it's actually gonna be equal, yes, yeah, so this this limit of the natural log is going to be equal to the limit as n approaches infinity of 1 over n of. And now, well, that's going to be the natural log of 1 over... Uh, yeah, 1 over n. <laughs> Had to make sure. 1 over n, then it's going to be 2 over n, then it's going to be 3 over n, all the way up to n over n. Lovely. But, well... 
this is pretty nice thing because we know that by the properties of logarithms the log of a times b is just gonna be the log of a times uh, sorry plus the log of b <laughs> so this thing right over here is gonna be pretty nice so let's apply this property into no into to our limit we're trying to evaluate it's gonna be the limit as n approaches infinity of 1 over n multiplied by and now this enormous sum of the natural log of 1 of 1 over n plus the natural log of 2 over n plus all the way up to the natural log of n over n and now huh well this looks kind of interesting huh okay i'm i'm not even going to be pretending that I would come up with this myself. So <laughs> let me just show you guys what I mean by this, well, weird acting of mine, yeah. So imagine that I have, uh, imagine you have a function. This is gonna be my function, this is gonna be my Cartesian coordinate system, yes, so those are my coordinates. I also got a function, maybe let's call this function f, and this looks something like this, this is gonna be my function f of x. I would like to integrate this function between 0 right here and let's say and, and 1, let's say right there. So I would like to get this area, or actually uh, this area under the curve right over there. So what would I have to do in order to get the area using, well, just the regular integration we learn about in the calculus one? Well, I would first of all have to divide my, divide my interval between zero and one into some, let's say, n, yeah, let's say n, mm, subintervals, yeah? And then use those subintervals to split the area under the curve into some n rectangles such that um, when I have, sorry, I, I have to find some other color here, maybe orange, such that the height of that rectangle is gonna be the function evaluated at an endpoint of the interval and its width gonna be the change in the x, which is, well, if I had n intervals, yeah, I have, I, sorry, I have an interval, uh, the original uh, interval of and of one, yeah, of the length one, and I had n smaller sub intervals, then, well, the length of each and every one of those smaller intervals is gonna be just one over n. Yeah, okay, well, that's pretty nice because it means that um, the area of, wait, wait a second, yeah, the area of um, this guy, I'm gonna take the right hand rule, yeah, the area of this rectangle is gonna be the function f of n evaluated at one over n, which is the endpoint of the first interval I have, or the first subinterval I have, multiplied by its width, which is one, o one over n. Then the area of this rectangle, and actually it's gonna be this rectangle right there, is gonna be, once again, right hand rule, the f, the, uh, the f, uh, evaluated, yeah, evaluated by 2 over n multiplied by 1 over n. We just go on like this until we hit, until we hit, and I'm gonna actually do it, or maybe I will do it here in pink, until we'll hit um, 1 over n multiplied by the area, oh, sorry, multiplied by um, the function evaluated at f of n all over n. That's gonna be the that's gonna be the area of this rectangle right there okay well because well f, f n, n by n is just one so one's gonna be the end point awesome so well if i wanted for this thing to be well my exact area and not just the um, approximation of it because well this is just a rumor sum which only approximates the area under my curve which i well honestly would uh, prefer to be let's say accurate, yeah, not just an approximate form, then I have to take the limit of all of this thing, of all of those things as n approaches infinity. So I just have to get infinitely many sub intervals, smaller sub intervals here. Okay, but this thing looks pretty 
similar to what I have here. <laughs> the only difference is that I don't have f of n here in my original limit, my original problem. I have natural log. And so I can, using what I just achieved there, we write this entire thing as just the integral from 0 to 1 of the natural log of x dx. Whoa! <laughs> well, that's... That's something you didn't see coming. <laughs> I'm absolutely sure about that. So, what is the integral from 0 to 1 of the natural log of x with respect to x? Well, we could do this one by integration by parts. And what we get is that is equal to negative 1. But, well, remember that this entire thing was equal to the natural log of the limit we wanted to um, evaluate in the first place. And so we get that if the natural log of the limit we wanted to evaluate in the first place was equal to negative 1, then the limit itself is equal to e to the negative 1, which is 1 over e. So, well, this is a beautiful situation not only because we use an integral and well, all those weird all those weird sub intervals and stuff like this in order to evaluate a, a, a limit that is actually pretty, it's actually really interesting because this guy right there this stuff here in this fraction this n factorial of n mm, uh, to the power of n was supposed to approach zero this one over n in the exponent also was to approach a zero so we actually got a, a lovely situation where zero but 0 to the 0th power actually turned out to be 1 over e, which is just... I don't know, I, 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 I love it. <laughs> okay. So once again, what did we do here in this problem? So what we did is we denoted the limit we wanted to evaluate by an L. Then what we did is we tried to find the natural log of L, which is just the limit of the natural log of all the stuff we had inside of that limit. What we did then is we just nicely split up this entire product of those things, those, you know, uh, n factor, uh, sorry, this quotient of n factorial n to the power of n for n smaller fractions that we then took log um, and added them up. Uh, that, then we took the log off and added them up. And then we nicely interpreted stuff here in this part as just well, the area under some kind of a curve in the interval between 0 and and one. Oh, lovely. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and well if you did, see you next one.